In this video, you're going to learn how to transform parent functions at kind of an introductory level. So I'm going to show you three different parent functions. We're going to go through three different examples. Once you understand these, you'll be able to apply it to any function. So let's dive into the first example. I'm going to give you some tips and techniques. If you were to cover up some of these extra numbers here, what are you left with? You're left with the absolute value function. That's what's called our parent function or our core function. And what you might want to do is make a table of values. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, 0, 1, 2. It always makes it positive. So those are our basic values. When we graph an absolute value graph, we get like a V-shaped graph. You're probably familiar with this already. It has a vertex at the origin. That's where it bends. But what we want to do now is we want to see how is this function going to look with all these transformations. Now when it's in this form, like a and then x minus h plus k, what you can do is you can just work from the left to the right, okay? And what you can do is you can say this a value here, what is it doing to the graph? Well, if it's negative outside of the absolute value like this, it's gonna make all the y values the opposite. If you were to make all the y values the opposite, it's gonna reflect this graph over the x-axis, okay? Now the three, that's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of three. So if you were just stretching this by three, it would go up three times faster, it would make it narrower. But because this is a negative three, it's going to reflect it over the x-axis and make it open down. So that's what the a is doing. Now what you can do if you have a table like this, because it's affecting the y values, you can multiply all these y values by negative three. Cross out the old y values. Now, the one that's grouped with the x is going to affect the x values. If it's not grouped with the x, it affects the y values. So it's easy to remember. You might want to make a note of that. Group with the x affects the x value or the x direction. Not group with the x affects the y values, okay, the vertical direction, the y coordinates. So that's easy to remember. The other thing you want to make a note of is if it's grouped with the x, it has what I like to call the quote-unquote opposite effect. So if you're adding two, that's actually going to shift the graph left to. If this was minus 2, it would actually shift the graph right to. So just remember, group with the x. When I say group with x, it's in the absolute value, or it's in the parentheses, or it's underneath the square root with the x. It affects those x values, but in the quote-unquote opposite way. Now, another note for your notes is adding and subtracting is going to be a translation, or what we call a shift, like you're picking up the graph and you're shifting it or moving it. Where it's multiplying or dividing, it's going to be a stretch or a shrink, okay, or a reflection if it's negative. So remember, adding and subtracting is a translation or a shift. So in this case, the plus 2 is shifting the graph left 2. That's affecting the x value, so I'm going to subtract 2 from all of these uh, x coordinates. Cross out the old ones. And then lastly, the minus 1, it's not grouped with the x. That means it's going to affect the y values. It's adding or subtracting, that's a shift. It's going to have the same effect, minus 1, it's going to shift it down 1, which means I'm going to subtract 1 from each of these uh, y values here. Cross out the old ones. Now we have the coordinates of our new points here. So let's see. So negative 4, negative 7, that's going off our graph a little bit. Let's do negative 3, negative 4, which would be right about here. Uh, negative 2, negative 1, it's right about here. Uh, negative 1, negative 4 is right about here. And so you can see there's our absolute value graph. Looks something like that. Opening down, it's narrower because we stretched it, and you got it. So that's one way to work with this is to work with the table, but you need to know those basic points of the parent function. Usually it's good to pick a couple of negative, zero, a couple of positive, but it depends on the graph. So you want to know your parent functions, and then you can do the transformations. Again, when it's in this simple form like this, you can really just think about working from left to right, okay, and that's an easy way to do it. But we'll get into some more tips and techniques in the second example. So let's go ahead and erase the whiteboard. I want to show you number two. Now let's graph y equals one half times the quantity x minus one squared plus two. What does that graph look like using transformations? Well, again, if you can see if you cover up some of these extra numbers here, you're left with the parent function y equals x squared. y equals x squared we know is a parabola, like a u-shaped graph. And some good points to pick are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If we plug that into the parent function and we square these values, we're going to get 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. Let's go ahead and plot that uh, parent function just so we can visualize a little bit here. 
So negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 2, 4. Okay, so there's our U-shaped graph. That's our parabola, our parent function. Now, following that left to right pattern for these basic, simple, introductory type transformations, let's look at this A value of 1 half. Now, the 1 half, it's not grouped with the X, right? So it's going to affect the Y values. It's going to make all the Y values half as much. So this is what we call a vertical shrink. Now, we could either look at the graph and say, oh, this is 4. 4 times half is 2. Here's 1. Half of 1 is a half. Half of 0 is still 0. Half and 2. So you can see it's like we're squeezing it towards the x-axis. That's a vertical shrink. If you want to use the table method, just multiply the y values by a half and cross out the old ones. Now, the minus 1, notice, is grouped with the x, right? It's inside the parentheses with the x, meaning it's going to affect the x direction or the x coordinates, but it has like the opposite effect. So minus 1 is going to shift the graph positive 1 to the right. If it was plus 1, it would go left 1. And remember, adding and subtracting is a shift, whereas multiplying or dividing, it's going to be like a stretch or a shrink. You know, it's like you're... Uh, so adding and subtracting is like what we call a rigid transformation. You're picking it up. It's rigid. You're not, you're not distorting it. Whereas if you multiply or divide, that's a stretch or shrink that's non-rigid. So minus 1, that means we're shifting right 1. So I'm going to take these points here. I'm going to shift them right 1 like this. Let's see if I can get this here uh, like that. Okay, so that means now our graph looks something like this. Okay, or I can add 1 to all the x coordinates here and cross out the old ones. Lastly, the plus 2. Now, notice the plus 2 is not grouped with the x. That means it's going to affect the y values, okay, the vertical direction. And it's addition, so that means it's going to be a translation or a shift. And the plus 2 is going to shift it up 2. Remember, if it's grouped with the x, it's the opposite. If it's not grouped with the x, it affects the y's. It has the same effect. So plus 2 is up 2. We can add 2 to all of our y values, or we can take these points and shift them up 2. So let's see. This would be 4, 2.5, 2, 2.5. Four, cross out the old ones, or we can move these up two. Let's see, one, two. Uh, let's see here, where is this one? One, two. This, where is this one right here? One, two. Uh, and then, of course, it's symmetric, so I can kind of follow this. Okay, so there's our final graph right, right there. Okay, so you can do it in steps using the graph, or if you want to just do it on the table and then graph the final result, whichever is more comfortable for you. So again, remember, group with the x or not group with the x. That's the key, okay? And let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do this third example, and let's see if we can get some more tips and techniques for that one. Okay, if you're enjoying this video so far, at the end of this video, I'm going to put a link to another video that goes more in-depth to transformations and teaches you a little bit more, you know, why this works and how to do more difficult examples. So look for that link. I'll point to it at the end. And then also, if you like the way that I explain things, I now have the ability here to offer channel memberships to my YouTube subscribers. So if you want to join the channel at the additional videos level, you can have access to all my math courses like my Algebra 1, Algebra 2, uh, Geometry Pre-Calculus, as well as midterm and final exam reviews, ACT and SAT prep videos, and more. So definitely uh, subscribe to that monthly membership. You can be a member for a month or three months, or you can discontinue for a while and then join back later when you need some additional help. It's very flexible, and um, I think you'll find it very helpful. So check that out. Let's do the last example. So when we look at this one, we can see by kind of covering up some of the extra quantities here that we're left with this core function, this parent function of y equals square root of x. And y equals square root of x, we just can't put in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 because we can't take the square root of negative numbers. So good numbers to put in are numbers that are easy to take the square root of, like 0, 1, 4, and 9. The square root of 0 is 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So key points. Let's go ahead and graph that basic graph. So here at the origin, 1, 1, uh, 4, 2, 9, 3. So the graph looks something like that. It's almost like a parabola on its side, like half a parabola. And so now, Using that technique of working from left to right, you can see we really don't have an A value, or you can think of the A value as being 1. But notice here that with the x, we have this negative here. 
So when the negative is grouped with the x like that, it's making all the x values the opposite. So that actually reflects the graph over the y-axis. When the negative's out here in front, it makes all the y values the opposite, which reflects it over the x-axis. So this is a reflection over the y-axis. I can multiply all the x values by negative one, cross out the old ones, and that's gonna give us our new graph. Or I can just do the mirror image here, reflecting it over the y. Okay, and so our graph would look something like, like this now. And then lastly, and you wanna always make sure you do this vertical translation up or down last. If you do it first and then you do a vertical stretch or a shrink, you're gonna get a different graph. So that's why with these basic ones, I kinda of say just work from left to right. And that other video I mentioned I'm gonna to point to at the end here, we'll get into more a deeper understanding in some of the ones that are more challenging where the order is very important. So the plus three, it's not grouped with the X, so that means it's gonna affect the Y values, okay? And so it's gonna have the same effect. The plus three is gonna shift it up three. Remember, plus or minus is a shift. Multiplying or dividing is like a stretch or a shrink, right? So the plus three is gonna shift all these points here up three. I can add three to the Y coordinates, or I can just, if I have the graph here, I can move these up three. Okay, so then that's gonna be our final graph right, right here. So great job if you're able to follow this video. Again, I recommend follow me over to this other video where I go more uh, in depth about transformations and we'll get some practice there. So I'll see you in that, that other video.